Louisiana, three from Texas, two from Oklahoma, Tennessee, Indiana, and Florida. Questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you guys, you know, we're down here and we see who comes in and out of this parking lot all the time. And every time there's a bus that pulls up out here, she's out there to meet them. If she's in town, she's here to meet them. So she's putting a face with what she's selling. And I think that's so critically important. And when Jim and I talked about this a couple of years ago, that the, the way that we're going to bring everything back up from our mid, midweek business, which is what we were lacking on, is through group travel and through um, small conventions. And I think she's making a world of difference. Thank you. Okay, um, Bobby Ray? <laughs> well, that's what I said. It, you know, she made them all warm and fuzzy, and I'm not going to make them mad. <laughs> uh, just going to let everybody know um, the hold up. Is that better? Yes. The hold up on the sidewalk repair letters um, has been taken care of. Um, the main hold up was we had to have a guideline through the historical district, and at the time, they didn't have any. So we've done several workshops, uh, have got that all passed. Um, the letters have already started out. We, they're, we're working on sections. I'm going to do 10 to 15 at a time. Um, I'm going to stagger when they're sent out so that we're not you know, inundated with guys trying to work on Spring Street and, and everything. The loop, lower loop on Spring Street toward Grotto Springs, there's going to be a kind of a hold up on it. We're working in conjunction um, with Chris Fisher about looking into the problem we have with the trees, with the tree roots pushing the sidewalks up. Um, they are, uh, if we try to cut the roots, it's going to kill the trees. And we're also, uh, from everything we found so far, the trees are more likely going to be the city's responsibility. So that's something else we're having to look at. Those but, trees are part of city inventory. Yes. So I would just want to let everybody know just uh, that they're in the mail and they're coming. So it doesn't catch everybody off guard. Now that you made them warm and fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, I need to go get my Kevlar vest. <laughs> Okay, um, and to report on the website, there has been talk about um, the council meetings being on the website. We've been working on this for a year, and it has been a lot of geek talk and tech stuff going back and forth, and they finally got it to the point to where hopefully it's going on this week, right? So it's, it's been a lot of work to get it there, but thanks to her and to him, they're, they're getting it up, so look for it this week. So we can go to the city site and watch the meeting? Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, public comment? Mary Ann Pawnell. <coughs> Oops, sorry. Mary Ann Pawnell, Six Smart Circle, Eureka Springs. Um, from what I understand, Allegiance Health Management is here tonight. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to hear what they had to say before I spoke, but um, I'm just kind of hoping that they'll answer some questions possibly when they do speak. Um, mainly I have three questions for them. But prior to my questions, I would like to uh, let them know that I'm very interested in the hospital. I believe that the people of Eureka Springs do deserve a quality good hospital for us to go to. Um, St. John's is a little far for us sometimes to go to. Uh, the city of Eureka, we're a wonderful city. We have lots of tourists here. We deserve a nice hospital, and I hope that Allegiance is the hospital or the management company that can make it happen. I spent a better part of the day trying to find something bad about them, and I couldn't. Um, they, they seem like a really good management company, and I'm really happy that I couldn't find anything bad about them. But 
I would like to encourage the hospital commission um, to exercise their power. Um, Allegiance Health Management, you are answerable to the commission. Um, the hospital commission, you have the power. You need to ask the right questions to Allegiance Health. If there's something that you're not understanding that they're doing, um, please, please ask them. Um, you know, your input is vital to them for them to be able to uh, continue a good work here. With that said, my three questions to Allegiance are this. I'd like to know what your average days were in the business, um, in healthcare, there's such a thing as revenue days, and they'll know what I'm talking about. I'd like to know what your average days were as of 11-1 of 2010. My second question is, I'd like to know what your salary is, your monthly salary that you're getting paid, um, and if your salary is all-inclusive, meaning uh, are you getting paid for additional services or are you paying somebody for any services done? Let's say you wanted to paint a wall in the emergency room. Are you paying somebody out of your contract salary to get that wall painted or are you handing a bill to your accounts payable department to pay that salary or to pay that, get that wall painted? Um, and my third question is, um, when was the last audit report um, completed? And um, probably this is something you're still working on, and if you could just give me a general idea of when that was done, I'd really like to know that. Um, thank you, and thanks for giving me an opportunity to talk to you. Thanks, Mary. Okay, that puts us to what is going to be number one. Uh, is a discussion of a request to waive the construction permit fees for the new high school. Wayne out there. I need a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Now, while he's coming in, just in case you guys have not looked it up in your code book, Hi. We did check with the municipal league to see if it is legal to waive any permit fees. Uh, Mr. Weaver contacted them. Their response was that Arkansas code prohibits the furnishing or giving any municipal property to persons, concern, or corpor corporation unless payment is made at the usual and regular rate. He goes on to say, on the other hand, cities are permitted to offer financial aid to school districts pursuant to Arkansas Code 1458-501. This aid may come from any source other than regular city taxes. Thus, rather than attempting to enter into a contractual agreement for street repairs or waive permit fees, I would recommend collecting the fees and remitting them back as a donation to the school district. That's from Municipal League. Now, on page 266. 266 of your code book, under C, under 10.1603, it says that for public institutions, including schools and hospitals, that provide services for public health, safety, and general welfare that relocate within the city limits shall be charged the capacity fee only for the increased use of the new or newly acquired buildings or facilities. Now, you do have a problem under your code that you guys might want to address in the future because you can only charge them if there's going to be more usage in the new building than there was in the old building, according to this. Now, if somebody comes in and buys that old building, there is nothing in our code that says that you can charge them for it because it says only new construction. <coughs> so that's going to be an issue that you guys might want to visit about. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'll address the uh, sewer capacity fee uh, first. And we're not adding on anything. We're going to be, we have the same number of students, same number of staff, and we'll simply be moving our school. We won't be adding a school. So, you know, you know that, that fee uh, really doesn't uh, 
I'm not sure where that's coming from because we're not adding anything on. We're just act we're just actually moving that, and the usage shouldn't be any more at all. So that's one thing. And the biggest thing is the uh, economic impact of this project. Uh, you're talking about somewhere between 10 and 11 million dollars. Uh, probably sales tax of upwards of $150,000 coming into the city, uh, plus uh, over 100,000 man hours. Uh, people will be in here probably for 14 to 15 months, uh, staying in hotels, eating in restaurants, uh, buying gas, um, have laborers from the area, and should generate a huge amount of, of tax revenue for the city. Now that, that's, that's one thing, and that's one reason we're coming to ask that you waive these fees. Uh, but every dollar we pay in fees is a dollar less that we can put in that building. And I think I stated last time that we try to keep this thing at the bare minimum. Um, you know, just barely, we raise the tax enough to build the building, nothing extra. So, uh, that's, again, that's, that's one reason why we're asking that uh, those fees be waived. Uh, any, any questions or anything uh, of us? This is uh, Andrew uh, Minks from Kenco Constructors. This is a board member, Karen Gross, that's with me tonight. And we, anyway, I, you know, I appreciate you considering this. This is a huge project for the city, probably the biggest project in years. And uh, again, it, it is a community project, and we can't we can't do this without the city and the community. And I just have to, uh, you know, congratulate the community for stepping up and, and be willing to raise their taxes to to build this school. So again, this is all community money, and it's just moving things around from one pot to another, I guess, of people's money. I don't have questions, but mostly it's for Molly Ray. When you put on your permits for subcontractors, sub plumbers, HVAC, don't each one of those contractors, do they pay their own permits, or does the, the job pay it? They pay for their permit, but essentially they get charged for it. When they bid the job, they all call me and say, hey, this is approximately what our, our bid's going to be, what's the permit fee going to be? And, and they essentially get charged for it. Anyway. That, that'll all be passed on to us. So. Anybody else? And how much do these fees amount to that they want waived? Well, the total of everything on this list is $68,255. These sewer capacity fees, which if it's not going to be more, then it'll just transfer from one building to the other, will be $20,925 that would come off of that $68,000. So you're talking $48,000, $47,000. Mm-hmm. That's not all that much money. 18000 of that is construction permits. The subcontractors, plumbing and HVAC amounts to 27000 The sewer tap fee is 300 The water tap meter fee is 500 with a $1,500 deposit. But this has all been built into the bond issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. say the biggest portion was the 20925 and when I looked it up and found that it, our, our code excludes schools and public institutions and hospitals. So that 20900 is coming off of there. So, you know, really, I don't know what else we could take down without hurting the city. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had calls from people in our city saying it's not really fair that we feel like we're going to get charged twice. We, you know, the whole school, the millage went to Holiday Island and, and everyone in the school district. But when we built the middle school, we also waived fees. Mm 